welcome back. My guest on the program this evening is the member for Kiwana, Jared Blay. Parents very supportive at this early stage. Do you think you were getting a bit of a, a push along from your mum and dad going through school and getting into uni to keep this interest in politics going? Uh, yeah, mum and dad have always been supportive. I've always had a very you know, supportive family. Yeah. Uh, and uh, mum and dad weren't, as I said, ever, ever majorly involved in any politics. Uh, they, they had an interest in politics, weren't members of any political party. So the push certainly into politics wasn't from a family or, or indeed from a family full of politicians. Mm. Uh, I come from a family uh, without any politicians in Australia, so I'm the first in my family in Australia. And uh, so they certainly uh, were pushing, but more of a supportive in terms of, Jared, you know, we love you, whatever you want to do, we'll support you. And that's where the support came from. Now being elected, they certainly support me more probably than they ever anticipated in terms of how to vote cards and, yeah. and, and door knocking and all that uh, that comes with campaigns. And yet your family has a fairly strong business presence mm. on the Sunshine mm. Coast. Your, your, your uncle who uh, ran Aussie World or the Edamaga pub for a fair while. Uh, mm. Having that interest in the local community and obviously growing up there and having a long family history you can't help be, but be interested in what's going on in your local community. Uh, look, I love our area. The yeah. Sunshine Coast is such a growing place and, and we've lived, uh, I've lived on the coast for over 20 years now. Uh, born in Griffith, New South Wales originally. Yeah. Uh, and then Uncle Coop uh, built the Edamoga pub in Albury, uh, Wodonga on the border, uh, after sort of seeing it at the old Australasian post and then had this idea and this concept, the old yeah. Ken Maynard uh, cartoon of the pub to make it a reality. So uh, in Albury, Wodonga was the first pub and then in the late 80s, uh, all the family packed up from New South Wales and moved to the Sunshine Coast where Uncle Coop built the Edamoga. And it was a, it was a whole family affair. Uh, my other aunt and uncle ran the uh, service station. My nana ran Mum Cooper's general store. My father was the outside manager. Mum was the inside manager. And Uncle Coop and Auntie Sonia owned the whole lot. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was a, you know, not many people have the opportunity to to grow up at a uh, tourist attraction, uh, which which I was blessed to have. It gives you a pretty fair insight into people in general mm. working on the inside of a business mm. like that mm. because you see people from interstate, you see people from overseas, you see people who live locally, you see people at their best and, dare I say, working with a pub, people mm. at their worst. Mm. Mm. It is. Uh, the Edamoga was always a great community yeah. pub, though, and, and Uncle Coop's vision, of course, was to make it into a into a better, bigger tourist attraction. That's when he started Aussie World. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, the recession we had to have in the 90s, he mm. lost the pub. Mm. Uh, and uh, then the family went their separate ways and mum and dad opened a camping, uh, small business camping store in Caloundra. Uh, so always had that small business focus. Uncle Coop went and did uh, selling hotels and motels around Australia and around Queensland. Uh, but mum and dad, uh, we, we continued to, sort of that was a new phase in their life with the small business and the camping shop. So every afternoon after school, we'd be, my brother and sister and I would be required to go down to the camping store and help out until five o'clock where I started at KFC and did the night shift. Must have been pretty traumatic though, looking back, big upheaval in the family in general. Oh, look, it was, uh, the having been so involved in the Edmoke pub was, was just a, such an amazing experience. Um, we are just glad it's still there though. Mm. You know, it survived, it's financial, it's great now and it, it's, it's, it's adding new attractions all the time. So uh, it's great to have that history, uh, but all, you know, sad when you go back out there. And I take my kids out there all the time, uh, and uh, you know, got so many memories being brought up at the Edamoga pub uh, that come flooding back. But so we'll always have great memories from that time. Is there a little section of Jared penciled or scratched into the wall somewhere? No, unfortunately, uh, Ken Maynard, who was the artist, what what happened is with the cartoon, the Australasian Post, is as my family, uh, my uncle Coop built the pub, yeah. and my family got involved. Um, the family started to be in caricatures in the cartoon. Is that right? So Uncle Coop featured in the car. He was always the bloke with the big moustache. Yeah, yeah. uh, my sister was the little girl in the nighty running around with a bone um, trying to whack the dog. Um, I think I was the only one, unfortunately, that didn't feature <laughs> in the cartoon. <laughs> I hadn't got to that stage. I think my brother got in there and, of course, my father in the, you know, it was the, the good cartoons with the, the cockatoos there and the, the blokes in the stubby shorts and singlets and... Uh, Pot guard. <laughs> I, I tell you, all I'm thinking about now is having Jared, the politician, <laughs> entered into that cartoon oh, strip. You know, great. You know, as I said, it was a great, great part of our life, and we're just thankful that we could, you know, through my uncle, bring that to the Sunshine Coast, mm. uh, and uh, and now the Edamogas in all parts of, around the world. Outside of politics, you've been in the performing arts. 
Mm. How do you spend your, your spare time? Obviously, you've got th you've got three kids and a, and a wife. Mm. Takes you away from your family a lot of time. Politics. How do you enjoy yourself? outside politics these days. Yeah, You're well, not a bad dancer, Jared. Well, Sally and I, uh, we were rock and roll dance partners uh, and we met rock and rolling on the dance floor okay. and uh, we married quite young. Uh, Sally was 18, I was 21. So, uh, and we started our family straight away. So, uh, but yeah, no, we were, we were rock and rollers. Uh, we actually competed as amateurs in, in some competitions around Queensland. Uh, loved performing arts. I, I got engaged in that in, in primary school as well. I was in mm. the Calandra Crown Theatre Company. So participated in uh, musicals, gondoliers, Jesus Christ Superstar, Guys and Dolls. So I had that theatrical uh, background, which, which I just loved. Unfortunately, uh, this job sort of doesn't allow me as much time as I'd like to spend on those social elements. Mm. Sally and I occasionally uh, will be able to go out and do a rock and roll dance and, and for charity as well. We did the uh, Dancing with the Stars on the Coast, the Hearing and Say Centre. Yeah. Did a bit of an exhibition for them just yeah. to support in a way that we could. Uh, dare I say, it's something that you have the ability to pull out to uh, drop the jaws to the floor on the uh, inappropriate or perhaps <laughs> appropriate occasion. Well, you know, it's uh, it's been a great part of my, uh, still a great part of my yeah. life. And, and Kiwana Surf Club, for instance, I'm the patron of the Kiwana Surf Club. And uh, they would much rather uh, me as their patron, as their local member, getting up and doing the karaoke in Elvis Presley. <laughs> And then stand there and do a 20 minute political speech about the, the area and things. So it's just been a, it's been a great way to socialise uh, and be a part of the community without the, the formal structure of politics. Yeah. And it's just, it's great in my family, we can go out and have a good night uh, with our constituents and people in the electorate and, uh, and get up for a dance and entertain them or not entertain them or however they see it. In politics, are you a performer? Does that background lend itself to your performance as a politician? I think there's a few elements that uh, that, that assist uh, with my job. Uh, of course, one's having the legal background because yeah. politics is about legislative. You know, we're legislators, so the legislative uh, assistance there with law certainly helps. And that's why, you know, on occasion you see proportionally people say oh, there's so many lawyers in, in, in parliament. But statistically, if you look along uh, the politicians, we're not, we don't outnumber uh, any other profession really mm -hmm. um, but it's a good basis I think uh, law and politics uh, and I never had any connection that I would do law and then politics it's I just coincidentally had an interest in law studied law I started studying politics and business first and then went into law uh, so it's certainly been that interest but no sort of um, defined connection that I had to do okay you're watching meet the ministers my guest on the program this evening is the shadow attorney general Jared Blay and we'll be back after the break.